Okay, folks, let me show you how to use the meeting options in Microsoft Teams. So I'm just going to assume you already have set up a Microsoft Teams meeting and you just want to customize it to make it as specific to your need as possible. So go ahead and open up Microsoft Teams, go to the calendar tab and click on the meeting that you want to change the options in. In this case, we're going to click on this purchase decisions. And once you open that up, you'll see the meeting options at the top of the screen. Go ahead and click on that and it will actually open up a browser window where you can edit those options. You might have to log in depending on if you logged in on your web app or not. But once you open that up, you'll see all sorts of different options that you can use to help out your meeting. And the first one is who can bypass the lobby. Now the lobby is basically a place in your meetings where uh, people wait so they can join and, and you or a co-organizer will have to approve that person to join the meeting. And it's a great tool to use to make sure that only the people that you want in the meeting are in the meeting. So you don't get someone random uh, and you can control kind of privacy and sharing. So by default, it typically sets up as people in your organization or people in your organization and guests. In this case, it's set up as people in my organization guests and you can make it as wide as everyone can bypass the lobby. So anyone from anywhere or only you and your core organizers say you have a super private meeting that you're talking about some sensitive topics and you want to make sure that no one can accidentally join maybe set up to only me and co-organizers. You can even set it up to where only the people you invite can bypass the lobby. Um, then you can change the options like always let callers bypass the lobby. You can turn that yes or no. You can set it up to where it announces when callers join or leave. So you get a little notification when people are in, so you're not surprised. And then you can even choose your core organizers. So your co-organizers will have the ability to modify most of the options within the meeting. So if you have folks that are going to help you in the meeting, let's say you're setting up like a like a like a department meeting and you want all the different department heads to have co-organizer abilities, you can do that. Uh, you can even customize who can present. So let's say you have a big town hall and you know that you have like six different speakers that you want to be able to present, but you don't want, you know, a thousand people on your phone call to have access to present. You can you can set that up to be very specific. You can also turn off allowing the mic for attendees. If you have a super big meeting, you can turn off allowing camera for attendees. If you have a super big meeting or if you're worried about uh, like bandwidth problems, you can have it record automatically. So rather than having to worry about clicking on that record button when you start a meeting, you can have it record automatically when you start it. You can also disable or enable the meeting chat. And also because these chats typically live beyond the meeting, you can even set it up to in meeting only. So the chat is only accessible during the meeting. You can turn off reactions. Uh, if you have someone who can do uh, cart captions, which is like a special like stenographer keyboard to do captions, you can set that up and you can even set up enable language interpretation and the Q and A, which I'll show you. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on just so I can show you that in a different video. But these are all the different options that you have for your meeting options to make it super custom. So you can make sure who you want can organize it as well as have access and uh, who can present.